For data-driven organizations, traditional data management approaches no longer cut the muster. Unless, of course, the organization invests huge sums to handle the variety and volume associated with big data and big data analytics. Organizations are increasingly seeking data storage and analytics solutions with more agility and flexibility, and of course, lower costs, than traditional data management can offer. A data lake is a new type of data management approach. It allows organizations to efficiently manage multiple types of data from a wide array of sources, perform analysis, and store the data and analysis outputs in both structured and unstructured formats in a central repository. Data lakes are a natural fit for cloud computing. As a result, many cloud providers, including AWS, are producing deployment templates to help customers quickly spin up scalable and cost-effective data lake platforms. However, before creating your AWS data lake platform, it is necessary to fully appreciate and address any potential security issues. The best and most effective way to understand the relevant threats and necessary security mitigations associated with creating a data lake platform on AWS is to threat model the full environment with Threat Modeler, your AWS technology partner for threat modeling. Out of the box, Threat Modeler comes with a complete AWS component library with AWS specific threats and security requirements pre mapped. For this video, we'll create our threat model based on the AWS reference architecture for a data lake platform deployment. We'll start our threat model with a blank diagram in Canvas. Our platform will be able to ingest large volumes of data from a variety of sources, so let's place a generic data source. We'll use an API gateway to access platform microservices. The template solution features an S3 bucket configured as a static website. The bucket will be deployed into a management console. We can show this on the canvas as a container. Containers are a special type of group in Threat Modeler in that they are defined by an architectural component. To do so, with the bucket selected, click Group in the diagramming toolbar. The default group type is a collection. We can change this by right-clicking the group and, from the pop-up menu, choosing Container. In the Defining Component dialog box, start typing the name of the desired component and select it when it appears. Users will authenticate through a Cognito service, which optionally can be supported by an Active Directory service. The microservices are handled by a Lambda functions. We use an S3 bucket to store datasets and manifest files associated with uploaded or downloaded datasets. The deployment template will generate a Dynamo database to hold metadata for data packages, settings, and so forth. We use a glue crawler to stay on top of any changes within each data package. And we use Athena to interactively query and analyze data directly within the data lake. Per the recommended architecture, we'll deploy an Elasticsearch service to index our data lake package for searching, CloudWatch will monitor our platform, and CloudWatch events will deliver a real-time stream of system events that describe the changes in platform resources. Now that all the architectural components and groups are added to the diagram in Canvas, the next step is to add the appropriate communication links. This is very easy to do in Threat Modeler. Simply click on a components icon, and drag an arrow to another icon. When the click is released, Threat Modeler automatically adds a communication link. The default protocol is HTTPS. We can change this by right-clicking the link and from the pop-up checkbox list, selecting the desired protocols and deselecting any not wanted. Inasmuch as this is a cloud-based platform, we'll use the default protocol for the remaining links. The final step to building a threat model is to add additional properties to select components as needed. For example, the Active Directory service will authenticate users using an HTML form that communicates with a backend database. We can add this to the threat model with widgets. Widgets are the means by which an application or component obtains and maintains state. To do so, with the component selected, click the Add button in the Information pane. From the pop up menu, choose Widgets. In the Widget field, select Form and set the backend field to database. 
We can also anticipate that the service will place a cookie on the user's device and change the session ID. So let's add widgets for these as well. And we should add authentication data elements. We also know that the Dynamo database is used for holding metadata, so let's add a data element for that. We can anticipate that the Elasticsearch service will get user input with an HTML form communicating with the backend database. And it is safe to anticipate that our data lake will store a variety of data, some of which may be personal or sensitive. Rather than adding each type of data element that we might encounter, we can set the attribute for the S3 service. Attributes are a means by which a group of preset properties can be added to the component based on the component's type. To do so, right-click the component, and from the pop-up menu, choose Attributes. In the dialog box, toggle the available attributes as desired. And with that, the threat model for our Data Lake platform is complete. By navigating to the Overview page, we can see the threat model has automatically identified 77 threats and 158 mitigating security requirements. By opening a threat group, we can get more information about the status and risks of our threat. By clicking on an individual threat, we can get detailed information on the threat, including any relevant threat intelligence. It took me, a non-security expert, about 15 minutes to create this threat model for an AWS Data Lake platform in Threat Modeler. If you'd like to learn more about threat modeling your AWS deployments, please visit us on the web at www.threatmodeler.com. And while you're there, be sure to schedule a live presentation. And of course, please take a moment to subscribe to the Threat Modeler YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.